All right, in this video, uh, we're going to be taking a look at two specific areas of map software, which have to do with our palette products. And the first one of those being a Wave Rider palette, which you can see here uh, used in wave solder machine monitoring and so that you can uh, kind of quantify the the machine parameters and uh, the different uh, the diff we'll take a look at the different measures that this wave wave rider produces for us in map software and so uh, with that let's pop over to our wave rider environment where this palette here that's pictured is used for um, wave solder machines and uh, it produces some key measures for us that are specific for wave solder machines and so again this tab is right next to your KPI tab in the bottom left uh, when you're using a wave rider environment which again you would only want to use if you're uh, recording in a wave rider palette with your mole and so just to begin here uh, it's going to show you your maximum temperature and minimum temperature uh, for your preheat area of the, the uh, wave machine as well as the slope, the, the maximum uh, rate at which uh, your coupon is, is heating up there. And so uh, the conveyor speed is also displayed. This one looks like it may be inaccurate um, as, as it's just a uh, sample, but that's pretty fast conveyor speed. Uh, the chip wave, uh, we do have uh, sensors which keep track of your chip wave and the dwell time in that wave for, for each sensor, as well as uh, the contact temp and the, the change in temperature for the coupon uh, as it goes through the wave. And so uh, the dwell time, as well as the contact length here, uh, help us extrapolate the uh, uh, basically, well, then from the dwell time, we're able to extrapolate the, the contact length with our speed sensor that's built into the palette uh, to let you know how long or how far of a distance the chip wave was in contact with each of these sensors. And from that, we can measure our uh, parallelism. Essentially, what the parallelism figure is, is uh, taking your dwell times from sensor C and minusing sensor A from that value. And so this is actually an absolute value. You can disregard the negative if it does happen to be negative because it's it's an absolute value to um, display how even your wave is across uh, the width of it. And essentially uh, same value or same figures here for your main solder wave. Um, your delta T at wave is usually going to be larger than the chip wave, um, a larger change in temperature on that main wave. Uh, and the contact temp is displayed as well. And you can see as you go through dwell time, uh, 2.2 seconds minus the other side of the palette, 2.6 seconds is going to get our absolute uh, parallelism value of 0 0.4 seconds. Um, for that figure, which may be handy to, to keep track of if you're wanting to take a look at uh, how level your wave is across uh, the width of it. And uh, the immersion depth is a extrapolated value as well. And that's going to um, help you keep an eye on, on how uh, deep your PCB board is, is going into the wave. Uh, normally you would want that um, to be between one quarter and one half of the height of the board itself. And so um, with that, we can look at our coupon values down here. This is our top foil um, measure, as well as the solder, which is um, a thermal couple just uh, centered in the coupon, uh, uh, open area in the coupon, if you will where it comes in direct contact with the solder and the bottom foil. And so uh, it will have your maximum negative slope, which is uh, its cooling rate, and the maximum positive slope for those top and bottom foil uh, areas on the coupon. 
and uh, the time above value, which is essentially the same as I described with the oven rider, uh, where you can set a, a temperature value uh, when you create a wave rider environment, and it will let you know how long uh, it spent above that temperature. And so with that, uh, you should be able to uh, get some valuable numbers or valuable measures uh, from your oven rider or wave rider palette.